All you have to do is send an email to guests on a show. The simple script. It's that simple. And then get the response and you'll see what you need to do next. Welcome to Honest E-Commerce, a podcast dedicated to cutting through the BS and finding actionable advice for online store owners. I'm your host, Chase Clymer, and I believe running a direct-to-consumer brand does not have to be complicated or a guessing game. On this podcast, we interview founders and experts who are putting in the work and creating real results. I also share my own insights from running our top Shopify consultancy, Electric Eye. We cut the fluff in favor of facts to help you grow your e-commerce business. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Honest E-Commerce. I'm your host, Chase Clymer. And today, welcoming to the show, Misha Z. He is the CEO and Chief Influence Officer. I love that. Of Beloved Media. They help online entrepreneurs bring their products to market in a big way without costly advertising. Misha, welcome to the show. Chase, so glad and honored to be here. Looking forward to this. This is going to be fun. I always enjoy talking with other podcasters. We say a lot of stuff and we're really good at that, but hopefully we get some substance in this episode. That's right. Awesome. Let's dive on in. So let's talk a, a bit more about beloved media. Can you quickly just tell me, like, what are you guys doing most of the time? What's like your uh, main service or, you know, how are you helping your clients just to help the listeners understand where we're really going to dive into today? Yeah, love it. Awesome. Such great question. So belove.media, it's my umbrella brand. Uh, the main thing I do, well, I was like, do I want to go deep on belove.media and the umbrella brand? But basically, when I started entrepreneuring, uh, re-emerging in the online space after uh, being a retired stay-at-home dad for a number of years, I was like, Russell Brunson, I joined his $25,000 a month coaching program. And he's like, start an umbrella brand. And I was like, belove.media. And so you can go to belove.media. And I believe it takes you to my homepage where I teach you how to grow your business online, right? In reality, what I'm doing. So if you go to badzuck.com, I've got what's called the influence army. So I teach people, entrepreneurs who want to bring their market, bring their message to market in a big way so they can increase their influence, their impact, and their income without throwing money away on Facebook ads or social media marketing or all this stuff. I teach people how to go on an influence tour. So they join my influence army. So you can go to influencearmy.com. There's another <laughs> .com for you. But basically, I teach entrepreneurs how to go on an influence tour. And that all starts by guest speaking on podcasts. I'm here right now talk. Yeah, go ahead, Chase. Oh, I mean, I just, I, I love it. And I, I can't get, wait to get into it. So like, for our listeners, what we're going to talk about today, specifically, is kind of like a go to market strategy for all of you young entrepreneurs that are launching brands that don't have any money to get into the paid ad space to launch that way. This is going to be a cost effective strategy. Cost effective. It's going to be free if you do it right, but it's going to be a very, uh, very fruitful strategy to get what we're going to, we're going to refer to as earned media. Uh, this is just this is how you get traffic without a budget. That's what we're going to talk about. Absolutely, how to get traffic without a budget and a lot of traffic, and perhaps build an amazing business without a budget. Absolutely. So. Let's let's take it back. And you're talking about an influencer tour, these, uh, but you kind of then ex said exactly what it is. Is you're talking about a, a strategy that's about a podcast tour uh, as kind of like a marketing strategy. So how would this play into Joe launching his brand of of new unique sneakers? Like let's just use him for an example here. How he he reaches out to you. What are you going to teach him? How are you going to help him? Yeah, I love it. So Joe has his... I'm just taking notes here. Joe, who's got an amazing sneaker brand. And he's like, I just created this amazing sneaker. I've got an amazing story. Hopefully, he's documented his stories a little bit, like how what inspired him to come up with these sneakers. I'm sure he's got a message. They probably look cooler, or maybe they've got better padding, or maybe you can jump... Yeah, they've got some cool, some cool, unique way that makes them more uh, earth friendly. Let's let's go with that angle. Ooh, I love it! I love it, earth friendly. So that's what a great, yeah. You're you're producing um, 
<laughs> sneakers that are earth friendly. Sorry, I just was thinking of my friend. It's been a long day already, Chase, so bear with me. But I've got a friend who literally 3D prints sunglasses that are earth friendly with castor bean oil. Anybody can go to sauteyewear.com. They are the most beautiful works of art ever. So I'm like, oh my God, Joe Sneaker, earth friendly uh, uh, sneakers. I love it, right? It resonated with me. So anyway, so he's got a story to tell. And so a way to do it for free to get your message out there without having to start spending money on Facebook ads or or social media ads or spending money on Amazon to promote your store or whatever is you strategically go guest speak on podcasts. Okay. And so the first thing is to understand that when you guest speak on a podcast, there's six main benefits or, or literally of how you will can grow your business from guest speaking on podcasts. The first one is CTA, the call to action, right? So we go out there and we find some strategic podcast to speak on and Joe Sneaker, like Joe Sneaker is going to have a lot of audiences to speak to. He could go speak to, um, entrepreneurial podcasts for young, for younger, for young people. If you know what I'm saying, like he could even speak uh, like your show obviously is e-commerce, but just think of all the, of all the, podcasts out there that talk about marketing and business and entrepreneurship that speak to a younger audience that he could jump on and talk about his shoes, right? Absolutely. So it doesn't need to be just a sports themed podcast. Obviously those podcasts are amazing basketball podcasts. I don't know. Uh, think of the litany of sport podcasts you could speak on, right? But there's so, if you get creative and understand that there are so many podcasts out there that have that slice of your audience, right? So once once that settles in our brain, it's like, oh my God, sky's the limit, right? Well, not only just the entrepreneurship angle, another one is the the differentiating factor that we made up for Joe Sneakers is like the earth friendly element. He could go talk on like an easy environmentalist esque podcast as well. It's a whole different channel he should kind of go after. Absolutely. Massive opportunity right there. How about depending on how uh, there's the creator podcast as well. There's the, oh, there's just so many different podcasts to go speak on. Yeah. Mind boggling. Um, he's, in, yeah, I'm just, my brain's going wild. Do we know a Joe sneaker? Do we have a real Someone guy? needs to reach. If, if this is, <laughs> we're talking about your business, reach out. <laughs> Yeah, right. Because <laughs> we're just going to do a whole free brainstorming session. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you've got the call to action, right? So you're, you're, you literally are saying, Hey, anybody can go to, go to joesneaker.com and they can see my earth friendly sneaker and you can buy a pair and try it and it's going to be amazing. And then you think of a, hopefully a catchy, a catchy, URL. So Joe Sneaker actually is not bad. So maybe someone who's listening <laughs> needs to go register joesneaker.com right now. But for example, I've got badzuck.com. So anybody who's already resonating with our message, go to badzuck.com, join my influence army, right? So the call to action. So that's the most obvious A1. The, the next is the host will sometimes direct recommend you to somebody. So Chase, for example, you're hearing me talking by the time we're done with this and we had a conversation before this, you're like, you know what? Misha's a little bit older, but he's sharp. He's got great experience. He knows what he's doing. He can help some of my e-commerce customers. Like as a matter of fact, Joe Sneaker needs to talk to him. So I'm going to direct introduce him. So those opportunities are happening all the time. If you're speaking on a on a podcast about earth friendly stuff, about eco this, eco that, or how to what, what what's the term I'm thinking of? You know, your 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 eco friendly production, or I can't remember what the sustainability term is, is the big sustainability term right? in e commerce these days. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Don't worry, I couldn't think of it before. It just came to me as you were talking about it. <laughs> Right. So, so that, that person is going to, going to go, Oh my gosh, I got all my friends and they need to buy your sneakers. So direct recommends right there. The other, the next is the host 
obviously, if they're grooving on what you're talking about, great chance they might use you. So you might go, hey, Misha, help me get on a podcast tour. Or the host goes, oh my gosh, I'm going to buy these sneakers for my whole family, right? I know in the e-commerce space, you're trying to sell a bunch, but you get it, man. It all adds up, right? Absolutely. And and uh, going back to the kind of the kind of second point you made about them making recommendations there are these ancillary recommendations that you won't think about asking about but it will just make sense when you start talking about your product and your story to these people he you, you know a, a host might be like you need to meet my cousin who is on this foundation and they need to know about your product or you know there's all these weird things that are just from increasing your surface luck area of getting your message out there and meeting new people absolutely so the collaboration opportunities right that is the third one where opportunities to collaborate you get a combination of the collaboration and the host direct recommend or or some version of that uh, there's this great story and I'm, I'm looking for the brand name because it is freaking awesome. It's, uh, where is it? Oh, Fire Creek Snacks. So these guys from Fire Creek Snacks, they make beef jerky sticks, healthy beef jerky sticks, right? Like Slim Jims, but healthy and extra protein packed. So they had gone out onto the pro golf tour and were promoting their product that way. So all these pro golfers were buying their beef sticks, right? These guys got inspired to go on a podcast tour. Next thing you know, they're speaking on podcasts. The next thing you know, the exact thing that you just spoke to happened. Walmart, they got introduced to Walmart through a podcast. Next thing you know, their products in Walmart. You can go to firesticks.com and check it out. Once you once you have some cool things to talk about, those things happen. I want to circle back. You said collaboration. Would this be an example of collaboration where you get on a certain podcast and maybe they do curated lists for holiday gift guides every year and they want an affiliate link from you and they're going to really push that particular thing? Would that be this collaboration you're talking about? Love it. Exactly. Great, great example. And so, yep, you have the opportunity to... for for you are going to do the marketing for me, Joe Sneaker, where you're going to say, hey, for an affi- for a percentage of the revenue, I will market your product on my Christmas list or whatever, however you do that. And you don't need to pay me until product starts selling, right? Do that affiliate percentage relationship. Am, am I saying that right? Absolutely. No, that's that's. I was just confirming that's where you put it on your list. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And massive opportunity. And so, for example... You could even go, so we go, you're an e-commerce, you have an e-commerce podcast, you help e-commerce sellers. I help people guest speak on podcasts. And initially, someone might go, well, I don't see any collaboration opportunities there. But again, you might love the message about guest speaking on podcasts. So great. What we're going to do is put together a, a joint offer where you'll... We'll do a master class. I'll have an offer at the end where I'll do a discount for a year. You can join my influence army instead of being, you know, uh, twelve hundred dollars for the year. It'll be a thousand dollars for the year. You you promote that class for me through your list, through your audience, and then I share the revenue on the end for people that join. Right. So there are collaboration opportunities like that too. All we got to do is start thinking creatively. Absolutely. What are we up to on your list now? Okay, sorry. Yes, we're um, repurposing content, number five. So repurpose content. So I'm going to do everything I can to get my hands on this episode from you, right? That's pretty easy. I'll send you the link. There we go. Bam. So now I've got the raw content. I can create clips, TikToks, all that stuff. And now I've got a ton of content that I've created organically that You know, this type of organic content is so powerful. It's a natural conversation between you and I, and it just plays well on TikToks, Reels, all that sort of stuff. So we'll have a ton of repurposable content. Then, of course, there's just... Go ahead. I appreciate that you put this at number five on your list when I think a lot of people view podcasts as just making content. Uh, and, And you don't even... It doesn't even broach your top three of like what the power of podcasting is. 
Um, and I think that's where when I started podcasting f- five or six years ago, it was because I didn't like writing, uh, and it was a way to produce content. And then through uh, kind of just doing it and then learning about what the power of it was, um, you know, it still is me stretching my my brain and, and, and producing content around these topics that I want to talk about. Uh, but everything that you said so far is like all these doors that have opened up from podcasting uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think that like the content element of it, if you were to argue like all you're doing is just making content every week, that in and of itself is worthwhile. Absolutely. I've written some crazy chat GPT prompts that I'll take the there's a program called Descript. I don't mean to get too techy for you and your audience, but there's a program called Descript. You upload your video to it, it shows the video on one side and it automatically transcribes it on the left. It's got the timeline on the bottom. You can edit the video off of the transcript. So as you cut and paste and move sentences, it's moving the video. Oh, that's really cool. It's really cool. So I created a chat GPT prompt that's crazy. It says, give me the the top three inspirational quotes, literal quotes, inspirational, tactical. There's a third one. And you could get as creative as if you want and put those together for me for the output on a grid. Then I'm just cutting and pasting and editing. I can crank out clips so fast on Descript output social media reels and so that's crazy what we can do right now i didn't mean to go down there oh i'm excited to see what you do with this episode um we use uh something called opus clip which takes it a little bit further uh and the computer does it for you um but you don't have the level of uh finesse as you're talking about here so i'm excited to kind of look into that and and, and kind of figure that out obviously c- content is king what is this what is the sixth thing on your list? Yeah, so the sixth thing is branding. So you will be seen as an authority in your audience. So we do forget that just by the fact that we're speaking on podcasts, speaking on podcasts, speaking on podcasts, we are creating our brand. We're creating our brand story. We're, we're putting ourselves out there and growing our brand. Does that make sense or did I say that well or... Maybe you want to read. It makes sense to me because I I understand it, and I've had people like make me understand that. Uh, shout out to Phil from Future Commerce. He's been very adamant to me. Like you're an influencer, you're a creator, you produce content every week. You need to think about this. And I was like, yeah, I, I guess you're right. Um, so and then the, the that that subject matter expertise uh, and that that uh, authority. You know that you get from being on other podcasts and producing your own podcast, even uh, that is very powerful in your career and in the foundation as an asset for your business. That that's a whole other avenue we could go down. Yeah, I'll speak to that on thirty seconds too. When I got started back after I had retired to get my kids through high school, I had a long sales career, telemarketing, flyer campaigns, email lists, or just getting the phone to ring, right? Retired. I'm like, I'm bringing all this into the into the new school. And so I joined Russell Brunson's um, $25,000 a year coaching program. This is three or four years ago. I just go big, right all, right all in, right? Why, why not? First thing he does is have you start a podcast, start, you know, talking about what you do on a platform. And he basically said, you know, pick a podcasting, blogging, which you're like, I don't like to write, so I'm going to podcast, or the third, YouTube. And for whatever reason, I, I, I picked podcasting. So I've been a po- prolific podcaster for a number of years now. I would go to Russell. I would go, I'll never forget it. I had started my podcast. Word had got out that I had had a podcast. I'm walking through Funnel Hacking Live. You know what Funnel Hiking Live is? Have you heard of it? I do, but the listeners need to know. Okay. So uh, all you listeners and, and the audience out there, Funnel Hiking Live is is basically this you know, rock concert for 5,000 of your best uh, online marketing friends. So it's a, it's a 
it's uh sorry my brain is a little fried right now but uh, anyway it's uh it's a marketing event 5000 people show up it's russell brunson's like premier event every year right yes exactly and for those that haven't read dot com secrets go read that book go read that book it's amazing yeah absolutely so i'm walking down i'm walking around well i'm literally walking through the crowd of 5000 people at Funnel Hacking Live, and people are like, you're that podcasting guy. You're that podcasting guy. You're that podcasting guy. People hadn't even listened to the podcast, but they knew I was that podcasting guy, which speaks to that branding, which speaks to the being the authority, which speaks to to being known for something, even though they don't even, perhaps they haven't even heard it. Right? It was powerful for me. Anyway, I'll, I'll move on. Uh, where were we? Uh, branding. Did you want to speak more to branding or did, did, did we close that loop? I think that you have convinced Joe Sneaker he needs to go on a podcast tour, right? Now, the thing about Joe Sneaker and our listeners is some of them aren't going to be able to afford to work with Bad Zuck and Misha, right? So if I want to DIY this, can I? Or, or do you have all the secrets? Do you have all the cards? You know, we're done. You got to go to badzuck.com. No, you can totally DIY this. And basically, you want to find the podcast to speak on. Then you need to find their emails. And then you need to send an email. Correct? It's pretty gosh darn simple. So yes. how can you find the email? So give me one second. I want to pull up, uh, pull something up for you. I've got my, where is it? My find your perfect podcast framework, my five-step framework to easily find more podcasts to speak on than you know what to do with. But I'm going to cut to the chase. You can go to Google and start there and go eco podcasts, sustainability podcasts, environmentally friendly podcasts, whatever, uh, uh, basketball podcasts, uh, Let's say Joe Sneaker makes earth friendly sneakers that are catered towards Iron Men, you know, Iron Man podcast, whatever, running podcast, whatever. And then you're going to find more podcasts than you know what to do with. I'll even take that a step further to what you'd mentioned earlier with, with Chat GPT. I think a lot of people have a problem with uh, drawing parallels between similar topics that are the same thing. Uh, you ask ChatGPT, be like, what would it be another word for an environmental list podcast? And it'll give you a bunch of ideas to then go Google again, or, you know, sustainability podcast. How, what are other ways people would be talking about this? And then you got a bunch more ideas to go Google. Love it. Genius, Chase. Such a good idea. And you could even say, Hey, I'm Joe Sneaker. Here's my audience. You could in your prompt to explain who you are, what you do. Help me figure out what podcast to speak on and go crazy or something, right? Like We're going to circle back to this to step two because there's an awesome thing to do there too. Uh, yeah, good. Um, and so then you just start finding those podcasts that way. The other thing is when you find a good target podcast, so a, a little of the grunt work, can it can start to be mind numbing unless you love research. Then you're like, oh my God, I'm in my dream space. But if you find it mind numbing, once you find podcasts that you want to speak on is you hack their speaker list. So I will go to honest, honest e-commerce and go, let's look at all the speakers that Chase has had on here, all the interviews, right? I'm going to hack that list. High percentage chance that 70% of those people have a platform that they speak on that they would love a guest such as myself, right? So whether they're podcasting, YouTubing, blogging, maybe they're even just an influencer on social media that has an audience an audience that we could do a joint something or something does that make sense so i just hack the list and then once you find those target rich podcasts there are literally endless podcasts to speak on i think uh, finding those podcasts um a, a, here's like a golden nugget for all the listeners out there i do a lot of this i'm a guest on a lot of podcasts uh and i think one of my favorite avenues to f find new podcasts uh cuz I'm very familiar with all the ones kind of in my my ecosystem is listennotes.com. Now this is a paid tool. We were talking about not having a budget before, but I feel like it is very affordable and gets you there a lot faster. 
Absolutely. So I was going to just say listen notes. You can absolutely pay on listen notes. And I will tell you as well, give me one second. Um, I have this incredible spreadsheet that I built. And uh, where is it? The podcast guest speaking template. There it is. So you can go to listen notes as one. So you search. If you're searching for what somebody could do also is go, all right, Chase has spoken on a lot of podcasts. So Climber is your last name. Am I saying it right? Yeah, great. So Chase Climber. So I go into listen notes and I put in quote Chase Climber end quote. And then it shows me all the podcasts I spoke on. I found all the podcasts you spoke on. And then bam, start. I know they want, you know what I mean? Then So if Joe Sneaker, if Joe Sneaker knows that Harry's Sneaker his direct competitor has already done this. He can just go find all the podcasts that Harry's already been on because those those people were already opt to a similar story. There you go. And just the key is the quotes because if you don't put the quotes and you put you know, Chase Climber, it's going to give you every podcast that had Chase or Climber or whatever. So we'll save the technical mumbo jumbo for that. So there you go. And then there's um, Chartable is another awesome one and podcast addict. Those are great ways to search. So what happens is you find the podcast you want to speak on. Now you got to figure out how to reach out to them. This is going to be a little bit of techno mumble jumbo, but basically every podcast has an RSS feed and embedded in 90% of those RSS feeds is the podcast email address, right? The shell manager address. And so you go to podcast addict or chartable. These are my favorite RSS feed finders. You put in the podcast. So you would put in honest e-commerce at podcastaddict.com. And then it says, copy RSS feed or show me RSS feed. And you click show me RSS feed. And then you scan it and there's the email. Bam. So a little bit of grunt work, but you can find 90% of podcast emails through the RSS feed finders. You don't even need to know what an RSS feed is. All you need to know is that Podcast Addict and Chartable have the RSS feeds. Again, you can go to listennotes.com and just pay for the email address. That's another great way to do it. I'll tell you this as well. I found a podcast that I wanted to speak on. I actually wanted this lady to speak on my podcast. This was just a day ago. And I was like, I got to have this lady on my podcast. So I'm searching all the RSS feeds. Couldn't find the darn address. Facebook page is next. You go to their Facebook page. A huge amount of people have their email address on the Facebook page. If it's not there, fine. You can go to Instagram, look on their link tree or whatever. Sometimes you can find a podcast, uh, uh, their email address that way. Really what you do is you go to YouTube because everybody's got a YouTube show. They started at some point and you go to the info and then you go, give me their email address. There's that little button. You click on the arrow and it says email address and you get their email address that way. So there her email address was. Another, this one is if you really want to get a hold of one person. Now I'm not talking like a Mark Zuckerberg level person, but like, you know, the CEO of some wedding brand that you know she's been on. Go listen to that podcast and I guarantee at the end she gives away her personal email. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. Um, yeah, so... There you go. And then the next question is so let's just to recap, you make a list, you, you make a list of the the podcasts you want to be on, then you find the right email to reach out to. And the next, I'm assuming is you email them. But what's in the email? Yeah, so my goodness, um let me pull up my uh worksheet for guesting request emails and you know who Johnny Lee Dumas is? I do not. I'm 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 here to learn. Awesome. Johnny Lee Dumas has um, a, a podcast called Entrepreneurs on Fire, and in the entrepreneur space, it's one of the biggest around, or it's a big one, right? And so he's the master at podcasting. Been doing it for a long time, and at one point, he's like, "Hey, here's I saw him at Funnel Hacking Live. Here's the." Um, Here's the script, the email script to send to get on a podcast. And it's actually pretty good. Hey, 
Hey, Chase, I'm Misha. Love your podcast, The Honest E-Commerce. Loved your last episode where you had Misha on there. I learned that I should go on a podcast tour. Would you like to do an interview swap, assuming you have your own podcast? If so, click here. Also, I did a five-star review. Here it is. Here's a couple episodes I've spoken on recently. Hit send. Okay, so there's a framework for you. You can also just Google how to get speak on podcasts. People are going to give you these templates that are very creative. Introduce yourself. Tell them how you love the show. Uh, give them a five star review. Listen to four episodes. Blah 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 blah. All this stuff. Add value. Do this. Blah, 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 right. All amazing. Do it all. However, if you're like, I'm not sure if I have any of that together yet. Literally, all you have to do is send. Let me find it for you. It's the easiest email in the world. I send it out all the time. And I literally say, verbatim, this has gotten me on endless podcasts. Chase, I found your Honest E-Commerce podcast, and you have a great show. Are you looking for an interesting guest to be on the show? If so, what are the next steps? And you sent me that exact email, and I resp- I replied with, "Who's the guest? <laughs> Who's the guest?" There you go. So you get um, four types of responses. You either get no response, okay, which is literally no response. You send out out of two hundred emails that you send, a hundred and eighty are not going to respond. In other words, if you sent that exact email that I sent, that I said to 200 people, 20, uh, 10% out of the 200 are going to give you some sort of a response. The other 180 aren't. So you literally just resend the same thing again. I literally will just hit forward and say, I just wanted to make sure you saw this. Right? And then two, they say yes. Great. Book here. Or they say yes and. Which what did you say? Yes who's, and. Who's the guest? Yeah. It's who's like the, yes who's and the who's guest. the guest. Who are you talking about? Yep. Yes and who's the guest. So I uh, me and whatever I said, right? Then you might need to not have an idea for a pitch, right? It's me. And I'd love to talk about I, I can't remember exactly what I sent you, but it's usually like me. And then see what they say, right? And then more is revealed on what you need to say from there. The other, the final answer is no. So they either, they either don't answer at all. They say yes, book here, or yes and, or no. If they say no, it's an opportunity to pitch for pitch number two. So if you just said no, I just, you just said no, I'm all booked up or no, I'm done interviewing people or no, I don't know you. I would say, I literally go, hey, thanks for responding back so quickly, Chase. Noted that you're not taking guests because you don't know me. You're all booked up. I literally just parrot exactly what they said. And then I say, but I'm interviewing people on my show. You want to be a guest? And so you're starting the relationship that way. A huge amount of people say, yes, I would. Or you could say, hey, I'd like to run an ad on your show. or no, I understand, or thanks for responding. I know you aren't taking guests, but offer number two. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. And I think this whole this whole part of the process here, it, it really is all very similar to old school cold outreach strategies. So to get good at this part, and, and this is definitely what's going to separate the people that get on podcasts from people that don't, is you have to A, not be scared of no, not be scared of this unknown fear of annoying someone else it's like that's that's going to be your biggest detractor of any any sort of wins you're going to have in your in your personal life or your business life like just get over that uh, but this is all old school cold outreach stuff you can find a lot of awesome information on how to do cold out- outreach the right way and you're just using cold outreach to the means of getting on podcasts and so something i, I i'm going to say about how I found success with cold outreach in the last couple of years is my first message to anybody isn't necessarily looking for a yes or no. It's more looking for them to be open to me 
telling them more bullshit. So it's like, hey, I'll reach out to Misha and be like, hey, are you guys currently accepting guests? Like, I do X, Y, and Z. Let me know if that's interesting to you. So, like, I'm just because I like to keep it short and sweet. My rule of thumb is if I can't read it in one frame on my iPhone, it's too long. Because that's what some, someone will actually read that. But if you get a novel and you recognize it's a cold email that's going right in the trash nine times out of 10. So I, m- my first thing when I'm doing cold outreach is I like to um, basically get them to opt in to let me then give them a shit ton of information. Yes, I love that. To start the engagement, right? To start the engagement. And then you can see what's the engagement point. So, you, right, which is just what you're talking to. You're just trying to start the conversation. Like, we're trying to start the conversation. We've targeted somebody. Hey, let's have a conversation versus data dump. When I first started in sales back in the late 1990s, Listen, I literally, Chase, have made a million hand-dialed phone calls. Like I was a telemarketing machine, and then I got auto-dialers, and then I built telemarketing teams. And when I would telemarket for home loans, and listen, back in the day, I I, I funded $1.5 billion in home loans, and that's a lot of units. Okay. And think that if you funded a $500,000 home loan, that would put on average twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars in your pocket, okay? And so I would build these lists of people who had a home loan, and I would start by saying, uh, "I hello, Bob, or is this Bob? Yes, this is Bob. Hi, Bob. It's Misha. I'm calling to see if I could interest you in our discounted mortgage rates, and then shut up, right? And then, no. If they said no, I'd say, oh, so you're not looking to purchase or refinance? No, done. Like, I'm not trying to sell somebody who doesn't want to be sold, right? And so, yeah. And what happens is I make 100 calls. One of them is going to say, oh, my God, I can't believe you just called me. It's so funny. I am looking to buy a home loan. I can't believe you just called me, right? And then you say, oh, great. So what's the purchase price? You don't go into, here's my rate or here's the data dump. You engage the conversation, right? So that, that's what you're talking about. And, and that's what I would encourage anybody to do. And to get over that call reluctance or that cold outreach reluctance, just understand that you're going to hear a, not a lot of no's and you're wasting my time and you're a dirty bastard and whatever. <laughs> right. Uh, you, you'll hear some interesting stuff, but yeah, you have to like that. You have to get over that fear and we never said it specifically. So I will say it now. You're going to make a list of a hundred podcasts. And what Mr. said is true. 20 will respond. Maybe you'll get on five, but that's, it's just a numbers game and you keep doing it. And then uh, another thing Misha alluded to it, but it's follow up. If you don't follow up, you're leaving that 80, 90% of possibilities just on the table. Because hell, these days, I archive stuff just to see if they follow up. Yeah. Follow up, follow up, follow up. The fortune is in the follow up. I used to listen to guys like Zig Ziglar and Brian Tracy. It's really interesting right now on my Instagram feed, Brian Tracy, he's old as dirt. He might be dead, so it might just be old repurposed content. But Brian Tracy and all his methods are getting a lot of play right now as as he's this genius, which he is. But I used to listen to him on cassette tape and CD back in the day. But anyway, these guys spoke to follow up, follow up, follow up, the fortunes and the follow up. Like I know that I might need to reach out to somebody, follow up with somebody five times. So actually, I have trained myself because I've been in this sales game for so long. I'm asking five times. So I already know that you're going to say no, and I'm going to reframe the question, and I'm going to address the thing, your objection, right? I'm going to five. (laughs) Like, that's how it goes. Anyway, sorry. Um, So let's let's recap what we were talking about now. So you made a list. You found the email. I'm going to double down there. It, it, something I've been doing a lot lately is also just LinkedIn profiles and using that's another way. Don't necessarily need the, the if you know it's Chase Climber, Honesty Commerce, LinkedIn, you type that in. Guess what? You found my LinkedIn profile. 
Maybe I'll read your message. Maybe I won't. But that's so it doesn't have to necessarily just be email. I love um, it. I think step two point five right here. There. Sorry, if you don't go, have any yeah. budget, you're doing this all manually. If you do have a budget, there are tools out there that will do this email automation and follow ups for you. Also, same thing with LinkedIn. Um, so that's that's gonna I guess elevate our way out of the the no budget strategy. Um, and then it's craft your message. You know, make it quick, make it simple, and like you said, add value for sure. It's like, hey, if someone reached out to me and it's like, hey, I grew a a, a custom engagement ring company to five million dollars a year. You know, we did X, Y, and Z. Is that a story you're looking to tell? I'd be like, yes. Here's the next step, right? Because they know exactly what I'm after. Um, and then, you know, just follow up. Like we said, did I miss anything there? No, I don't think so. I think you've done a great job of recapping it, especially with the 2.5. The LinkedIn tip, that was tip of the day right there, Chase. So good. Thank you for that. I mean, that's... All right. Look, I'll tell everybody out there, I use an app called Linked Helper 2. Uh, it keeps you out of LinkedIn jail, supposedly. Um, I, I, and that's how I get a lot of my guests for my podcasts is I, is I use that and I find their profile and I just say, hey. Boom. Is that like... No, my exact outreach. Link helper too. I just type it in Google. But my exact outreach for me to get guests on my podcast is one sentence. Hey, would you be interested in being a guest on a top five percent podcast? So good, amazing. And so, what 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 are some of the answers that you get? Um, Well, a lot of them are positive. A lot of non answers. A lot of people don't accept my LinkedIn request. Right. So there's all that's out there. But yesterday, somebody said something that was truly funny, which was, I'd be the worst guest ever. I hate our e-commerce. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for the honesty. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so good. You know what? That actually would be a fun episode. You could be like, let's do an episode on e-commerce horror stories. <laughs> I, I was just like, I was like, now you have me interested. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So if somebody says yes... I would. What's your next reply? Or what's the what's the typical ch- chain there? When yeah, all right. So, so for for my process, the next reply would uh, we do a lot of pre vetting when we like look to see who we want a guest to be. Uh, but then I send them to a to a call scheduling link, and within that link, uh, I put some questions in there to make sure that uh, the guest is what I assumed they were. So these are qualification questions. Um, because sometimes it's uncomfortable to ask those questions, even though, you know, it's my job. We've been, been doing sales forever. You could just have a robot ask a question for you. Uh, and then you have those kind of qualification questions within the process. And then it's just kind of into actually what you went through, Misha. We had that pre call, uh, talked about what we want to talk about on this episode. Then we talk about, uh, what next steps are, what the software is, et cetera, XYZ. And then, you know, I just dump you in the next step of the process. Amazing. And I loved your process and I actually borrowed something from it. Do you mind if I speak to your process quick? Because I, I don't want to give away anything. Yeah. So you have this really cool thing where you're uh, $500 to, for, due to production costs, right? And then you say, hey, use this coupon code because you're a friend or a referral or whatever it is. And so I was like, oh my gosh. So I integrated that into my Calendly flow now where if it's an unsolicited unsolicited invite to be a guest on my show, I'll be like, absolutely. Here's a $500 production cost. You know, da, 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 da. You'll get X amount of clips. And so... It's funny to end this episode talking about what they might experience. And I think we should just be honest to it. So uh, when you get to a certain point, sometimes guests aren't the right fit. And you get a lot of solicitation, and I, and I, I get quite a lot. Uh, you know, our ideal fit is that founder telling that founder story, but sometimes it's SaaS apps, sometimes it's other podcasters, other marketers, and things like that. And I have a default response that I don't even send; my assistant sends, so I can't even have any personal thing to it anymore. Which is like, hey, there's a cost associated with producing these episodes. Like the cost is X. Do you have that in your budget? And it's not to make money here. It's just I can't produce every episode because the quality will be terrible. And also, like some of these things just aren't the right fit. Um, so you might experience that. And if it truly is a podcast you want to be on, maybe just pay the fee. Absolutely. And 
I, what was so inspiring about it for me was it is a way to defer the true production costs. So any of your audience that's watching this, I love podcasts. I have a passion for it. It's a, a labor of love, but it's a lot of work and there's a lot of production going on. And especially if as collateral assets are coming out at the end, meaning Chase, you're providing assets for me to promote the episode. Like it takes time, effort to create all this content. And I was like, yeah, I want to help defer on the cost. And this is an efficient way for me to do it. Like I, I loved how I could integrate it in the Calendly. That was my big takeaway because I had been thinking about I need to start deferring some of these production costs. And then you had integrated it into your Calendly or the, the the scheduling flow, onboarding form. The onboarding form, yeah. The the onboarding form, uh, and then just to tell everyone out there, it's like I, I the the apps are I use Cognito form for our onboarding form, and then once you submit that, it kicks you right over to Calendly to schedule, and we bill for these bonus episodes uh, when they aren't like a strategically free bonus episode. You know, that's how we're billing is just through to Cognito form. It, it just keeps things seamless. Uh, and then, you know, I'll take the fee away all the time when there are certain reasons to. And it, it just gets, it goes back to sales and negotiation. It's like, give me a good reason to make this free. And Misha had a great one. And a lot of people have great ones. Uh, and sometimes they don't care to pay the production fee because they've got, uh, they've got a investment, they've got a marketing fund and it, it's, you know, they just kick it over there and it gets paid for. And then you get your expenses offset for producing that episode. So it's a win win, I guess. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, and we don't need to go any more deeper on that. I think the key takeaway is, is if you're hearing this and you're, and all of a sudden the can of worms have been opened and all you have to do is send an email to guest on a show. The simple script. It's that simple. And then get the response and you'll see what you need to do next. And then you'll get the next response and see what you need to do next. Some point someone's going to say, give me your bio. And then you're going to, if you don't have a bio, you, then you write your bio, right? Or what's your free giveaway? And you're like, well, I don't have a free giveaway. I guess I'll create. My, so just create it as you need it. That's what, right? Absolutely. So Misha, I listened to this episode, right? And I'm sold on the power of podcasting, right? And I actually do have a budget, right? So I don't want to do this. I'm busy. How do I reach out to you and just have you do this for me? Yeah. Go to badzuck dot com. Of course, it should be right there if you're listening and you can't see it. Badzuck.com, B-A-D-Z-U-C-K dot com. I've got what's called my influence army. You can join my influence army. I've got a couple of tiers in there. One where done with you. So I'm going to coach you up, give you everything you need to do it yourself. And I'm going to make it so easy for you to do it. I'm going to be there with you as you do it as well as I've got a tier three service where I will send out 200 emails for you a month, brand new to brand new podcasts a month. And uh, that's a pretty good way to go. I'm just creating massive engagement for you. And next thing you know, you're going to be on more podcasts and you know what to do with. Does that answer your question? Absolutely answers my questions. We'll make sure to link to everything you've chatted about today in the show notes. Uh, Misha, I can't thank you enough for coming on my show. And I'm looking forward to to chatting with you on your show. So uh, depending on when these things come out, we'll make sure to link to those things in the descriptions as well. Chase, amazing conversations. Thank you so much for sharing your platform with me and, and bringing me on. Uh, thank you. Chat soon. Cheers. We can't thank our guests enough for coming on the show and sharing their knowledge and journey with us. We've got a lot to think about and potentially add into our own businesses. You can find all the links in the show notes. You can subscribe to the newsletter at honestycommerce.co to get each episode delivered right into your inbox. If you're enjoying this content, consider leaving a review on iTunes that really helps us out. Lastly, if you're a store owner looking for an amazing partner to help you get your Shopify store to the next level, reach out to Electric Eye at electriceye.io slash connect. Until next time.